we've, uh, we've had, in my opinion, a monumental day. That's all there is to it. I mean, we, we really did something from the standpoint of the Senate and myself that was uh, remarkable. I mean, especially in the wake of, you know, votes that were getting on the House side. But, uh, but really what happened was we, we did something complete bipartisan effort, which was what we ought to do here. We ought to talk, work together, compromise, work for the better good. And we did it. And we pulled it off as almost unanimously as you could possibly pull it off. You know, I, I really salute and, and, and have got many, many accolades for our Senate President, uh, Mitch Carmichael, and as well as Roman Prezioso, because they did great work with their offices and, uh, and look what we delivered. And right behind me is our speaker of our house, or you know, and uh, former speaker, you know, and Tim Miley. And our house stepped up yesterday as well as today and voted absolutely unanimously. So now you've got a situation where you've basically got four legs of a five-leg stool that are all saying, we want to be heard. And I'm not going to spend a great amount of time beating on the side, the, the fifth leg of the stool that's, uh, that's performing kind of strangely, to tell you the truth. But, uh, but, you know, we all perform however we think we should perform. And the net net of the whole thing is, is just this. A no vote, a no vote, on this is a yes vote in many ways. Now just think, a no vote is saying that yes, I am for substantially cutting DHHR. A no vote is really saying yes, I am for cutting our universities and cutting higher ed in a big way. A no vote is for saying I am really going to get after and cut K through 12. A no vote is saying I am absolutely against the teacher's pay raise. A no vote is saying I don't want to put any money into tourism and marketing our state. A no vote is saying I'm against our veterans and I'm not willing to exempt their retirement from state income tax. A no vote is saying our coal companies that are out there that are really hurting in a lot of different ways and want to employ more people, we don't want to work with them and try to cut their severance tax. And no vote is saying we don't really want those 48,000 new road jobs. And no vote is saying you know, we're really not interested in you being able to go for free on the turnpike and pay $8. We just want you to keep on paying the $2 all the time. A no vote saying we really want to take more money out of rainy day, which will absolutely lead to the downgrade of our bonds even more. And if, if that's not enough, a no vote is now saying, and on top of all that, we don't want to cut your income tax either. Now that's what a no vote really is. Now we can say anything we want, but that's what a no vote is telling us all. So, to me, I really truly believe, and I, I do this all the time, if I'm going in the movie, or I'm going to Kroger's, or I'm going to Walmart, or I'm stopping at a convenience store, or I'm getting gas. I mean, I drive my own vehicle. I drive. I drive. And I drive my own vehicle. I put my own gas in. It's not state's gas. It's my vehicle. It's my gas. I drive. Everywhere I stop. I can say this 
I could say this with the good Lord saying that if I'm telling you anything that's not the truth, please, Lord, send me to hell. And I am a Christian through and through, and I absolutely mean this sincerely as I can mean it. I am yet to a single place that I would stop or be to have the first person come up to me and say we're going the wrong way. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm not the first person. In fact, it's just the opposite. You know, it's a rock concert. It's people leaning out the, 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 uh, the, the window of their vehicle screaming, go get them, Jim. Go get them. Do this, do that, and everything. We're doing the right thing here. We really are. And we have had a plan that was passed today in the Senate bipartisanly as it can possibly be and almost unanimously beyond belief and it's, it truly is an incredible, incredible plan. Incredible. I mean, think about it. Just think about it. This state is in a terrible dilemma. Now, say what we want, but we've got a hole in the bucket like nobody's business. We've had the opportunity to fix it, but we didn't. Now, we've got a terrible hole. And we got to do something about it. And here's what we can do. We can do all the stuff that's been proposed to us and everything and be, and, and then turn around and we can cut higher ed and, and DHHR and K through 12 and all that kind of stuff. And we can drain a rainy day fund and, and absolutely not do anything whatsoever about our road jobs or anything like that. And then, let me just ask one basic question. If you do just that, what's the plan? What is the plan? Now, the other thing, the other two things I'd say, and then I'll open it to all your questions, is just this. Is my plan does one thing, or the plan, the bipartisan plan that's come out of the Senate today does one thing, that is the undercurrent in a lot of ways of all kinds of stuff. It puts us on a pathway of tax reduction here. It is a tax cutting plan. It is not a tax raising plan. It's a tax cutting plan. How could you be a Republican and, and truly, unless you were being childish, really and truly, just trying to make a point to say, well, they weren't really talking to us. Do you really believe, now let's be fair again, do you really believe by their actions that they really want to compromise or they really want to talk or they really, really want to negotiate? If they wanted to do that, why didn't they just send this to committee and send something back out, out to the Senate and work with the Senate and everything? They really don't want to do that. And that's what I ran into over and over and over. For, that, for those of you to believe that I didn't want to talk to the House or I didn't want to talk to the Speaker, that's not true. It's just not true. So the other thing is this, that the underlying current of all this that you may miss is with their plan, all the jobs went out the window. We cut, cut, cut and we cut into rainy day, and then we had nowhere to go. We have nowhere to go. And the other thing that you just might miss is just this. What about the drugs? What about the drugs? The drug epidemic is cannibalizing us. In the plan that we passed today out of the Senate, it absolutely directly, directly you know, addresses the drug problem and tries to do something about it. The plan that came out of the Senate today is just that. It's a real plan. It is a real plan. And you're seeing the worst of the worst in regard to politics. The worst of the worst. Childhood, childlessness. You're seeing the worst of the worst. 
you're seeing the real, real, real faces of those that said they wouldn't talk to us. And just ask yourself, are they really wanting to talk? Are they really wanting to compromise? Now, you saw people stand up and speak. All the Republicans on the Senate side. All of them, except one that was absent. And he would have been in 100%. All of the Dems except one. All of the Dems at the House except, except none. You know, and your governor. But remember just this. Your governor doesn't want a thing in the world. Not one thing whatsoever for me. No ego, no money, no access, no nothing. That's all I want is goodness for our state. Now, I would tell you the last and my last would be just this. I will not, I will not stand idly by and see others genuinely try to hurt our people. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to see us, me stand idly by, and see us throw people out in the streets that are DHHR people. I'm not going to stand idly by and see us walk away from our universities and our schools or our K through 12 people or our vets I'm not going to see us just throw our coal companies to the winds, or I'm not going to absolutely just stand idly by and see us just throw the Women's Commission out because we just, well, we don't need that and we don't need public broadcasting. I'm not going to stand and see us hurt our people because of some kind of game. Now, the last and my last and my last would be just this. The people are speaking to all of us. There's no chance on this planet that the people, the people aren't with me and with this bipartisan plan that came out today. The people are really speaking. What we're seeing, though, is we're seeing that a small network of individuals that wield an incredible amount of power have the ability to hurt us. And as God gives me breath, I'm not going to let him do it. So I stand ready to compromise. I stand ready to talk. We have an incredible, incredible bill on the table right now, and we don't need to miss this opportunity. If we do, we're going to hurt a lot of people. I'll ask any question, answer any question that I can answer. answer. The speaker told us that he's ready to start talking now. Is what this evening. Who will you hear, Brad? Listen, Brad, now just think about this. And I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. Because we don't have time for that. When I first came into this office, the first thing I did was went right to the House floor. They said, never had a governor been there before. And I went right there to talk. I invited the speaker over to the mansion two different times we ate breakfast together. There was multiple times we were in my office and we had meetings within my office. And my chief of staff is sitting right back here and he is in constant communication with me. I had two different meetings with the speaker, and I left my home in Lewisburg at 5.30 in the morning and drove down here and, show, and, and was sitting in here, and he never showed up. Two different times. didn't even call. And that man right back there is an eyewitness, and he'll testify to that till the cows come home. Don't begin to tell me that I haven't been open and willing and, and still stand that way to talk to the speaker, or talk to anyone, to talk to anyone. But the problem is just this, is when we talk, we don't 
we don't talk about trying to compromise or work on something. We talk about nothing but he is, he is very rock solid that this is what he wants and it never changes. It never, ever changes. And, and just think about this. Think about the proposals that I've made and how they've evolved and how they've changed. I walked out on the, at the, at the uh, state of the state and said, I hope someday we'll get, be able to get rid of the state income tax. I never dreamed in a million years that we could do it now. But all of a sudden we're on that pathway. I said, we, let, we, need, we have to have a cat tax. And it needs to be two-tenths of one percent. And then I modified it down to a sixth of that. And then we got rid of the cap tax and we went to a 1% corporate net. You know, I came out with a 10 cent gas tax and then I started doing all the numbers and modifying and modifying and modifying and modifying and came back to a four and a half cent gas tax. You know, I never dreamed in a million years that we could really do, we could basically raise a few taxes but significantly lower taxes that were greatly in excess of that and make it work. But how it all works is those unbelievable road jobs. And that was my idea. That was absolutely my idea. So, you know, I'm willing, I'm willing to talk, you know, I work 24-7 every day, every single day. I'm willing to go right there right now and talk. I'm, I'm willing to talk at any time for any length to try to resolve this situation. But you can't resolve this situation this way. Let's broaden the base, and we're gonna broaden the base and have direct use taxes. That's business against business. That's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because business is going to erupt. It's not gonna work. But even if it did, the next step behind that is $200 million of cuts to DHHR and K through 12 and higher ed. Now that's the plan. That's the plan right there. Now, beyond that, tell me what would happen to this state. I mean, somebody tell me. That's the plan. Don't raise consumer sales tax. Broaden the base. Can't do that. And cut $200 million out of our people. Now that's the plan. You know, well, where do we go? Where do we go from there? I mean, that is nothing but just kick the can down. And every time we meet, every single time, it's the same thing. It is the exact same thing. You can't get anywhere like that. You just can't get anywhere like that. That There is no plan there. There is no plan. And if, and if you don't want to do that, then do this. Cut $150 million worth of stuff and maybe cut $75 million out of rainy day. Well, that's a shipwreck, too. Our plan, just think about it, together, the Republicans, the Democrats, me, our plan together now has a pathway. It says we're going to balance the budget, but we're going to create a mountain of jobs. We're not going to cut all this other stuff and, and hurt our, you know, cut ourselves into oblivion. We're going to have a mountain of blooming jobs, and on top of that, we're going to lower our state income tax and open, uh, and open our arms and say, come to West Virginia. We're going to market ourselves with tourism dollars, and we're going to treat our teachers right. We're going to treat our vets right. We're going to say, open our arms and say, vets, come to West Virginia. Bring your expertise. Bring your knowledge. Bring everything you have and come to West Virginia and spend your retirement dollars here tax-free and go buy big gulps and hunting license and, and gasoline and everything else in West Virginia. That's what our plan is. Our plan is a plan. It is a plan that takes us somewhere. You know, and that's what I'm saying. I'm willing to sit and talk this this smoke and mirrors stuff of saying, you know, that I wasn't, I wasn't willing to talk to the House is silly. You saw the perfect example today that the House doesn't even want to talk to the Republican uh, uh, Senate members. 
how do you think they're going to talk to me? Crying out loud, they don't want to talk to anybody. You know? And so, don't blame that on me. Okay, next question. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing is, is you know, if we don't have some real sense come to us, we're going to end up costing taxpayers lots and lots and lots of money. And that's terrible. There's just no excuse for that. No. The only other thing is just this, is, is yesterday we were a little late in getting the bills out and everything. And the reason for that lateness is just this, is we were told the Coal Association was working on, you know, the severance tax tweaking, and we wanted to have their input, and we waited, and we thought we had it, and we waited, and we thought we had it, and it really didn't arrive till about 10.30 on yesterday morning, and then by the, by the time that our people could get it in the format and everything and get it up to the people, that's what slowed us down. I'm glad we waited. I'm really glad we waited because they came with some really good stuff. Governor, the center for budget policy is saying that income tax cuts for the middle class and, and wealthier wage earners uh, well, got to be made up somewhere, in this case, with the sales tax, and that ultimately is going to hurt poorer people. For what? It's oh, hurt poorer people to fund tax cuts. Okay, I wish Dave Hardy was here because he could probably explain that a whole lot better than I, but that's not true at all. You know, what we really tried to do is we tried to make a concerted effort to try as hard as we possibly could to help the lowest income bracket the very most. And then the middle income brackets even, even very significantly. And the very, very, very highest, we even added today a fourth bracket to the very, very highest and everything. And so we surely didn't want to front load and put a burden on the backs of the people. Just think, of, think about this just for a second. You know, if you're a wage earner in, in West Virginia, an average wage earner, and I don't know, don't hold me to exactly to the penny to these numbers. But what if I said to you this, and, and, and think about this, this scenario. If you went with the plan, the budget that was passed, or the budget that these people are voting against, but really voting for, if grandma's in the house and she likes to go to the senior center, she may not be able to go. And if I get in my car and I want to drive down to, con to the convenience store, there's three potholes there and it's tearing my car all to pieces. No way that we're going to be able to fix the roads. Now, in addition to all that, you know, maybe my daughter wants to go to WVU, but what we've done to WVU is create a situation where the tuition's got to go straight through the roof. Now, in addition to that, if you don't want to, if you don't want to just fixate there, maybe there's an autistic child in the house that we're just throwing out in the street. Now, maybe I'm a vet. Or I got a buddy that Uncle Joe's a vet, and I want him to move to West Virginia, and he would come in a second if we, if we exempted his retirement, and, he, and, we, and we decide we're not going to do that either. Now, just think with me, stay with me. What if my wife is a teacher, and we could give her a two percent pay raise? But no, nope, we're not going to do that either. But then, what if I said to you, I tell you what I'll do. I'll fix every bit of that part of your life. Our plan fixes every bit of that part of your life, which is killing you. It's killing you. We will fix every single bit of that, and here's what you've got to do. An average family in West Virginia, the consumer sales tax is going to cost you $65. $65. And you know what? That average family... Your savings on your income tax is $405. So in other words, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix all of your woes, or our bipartisan plan is, 
We're going to fix all your problems, or as many of them as we possibly can. And then you've got to write me a check for $65, and I'm going to write you one back for $405. Now you find me somebody that won't want to do that. And we're throwing all that away. And not only that, we may actually be able to have you an extra job or two or an extra neighbor or two because there's 48,000 jobs at stake here too. Please, I'm, I'm a logic guy. Please, somebody make some logic out of this. Now look, y'all have been kind enough to, to wait and, and, and come here. Before I go, what we should all do is to ourselves, we should have really serious concerns and prayers for those two two men that lost their life right today in an airline cra crash right up here on the hill. You know, all this other stuff we're working on is really serious stuff and it affects real families. But that's really bad. And we can't just breeze past that in any way. So, at least from my standpoint, my thoughts and prayers are surely with those families. And, uh, you know, every time we lose somebody, West Virginia and these two guys were from Logan, and every time we lose somebody, it's tough. And so uh, we don't want to lose sight of that, that's for sure. And the only other thing that newsworthy that I could mention to you would be that, uh, you know, I guess we just got through passing, you know, a new health care law in our, in our nation, and, and I, I would comment by saying that uh, it's premature to know the effects of how that will be on our people, and, uh, but some way, somehow, we've got to stand firm to try to take care of the weakest and the sickest and the, and the preconditions and, and or preexisting conditions and, and, and try to stand firm to help our people. Biggest thing today is I, I, I really hate really bad. I woke up this morning right right off the get go. I was doing a bunch of other things and kind of splashing across about that plane. That's uh, that's tough stuff. Okay, I'm done. Thank y'all. Thank all y'all.